Now, with so many updates coming in thick and fast, it's very easy to either miss or maybe forget some functionality already in Lightroom. So in this short video, I just want to cover one small thing about adding contrast that can make a big difference. Okay, so in Lightroom, there are a whole host of ways that we can add contrast, ranging from the simple contrast slider, the tone curve, and of course, contrast is added to some degree or another when we use controls in the effects section with texture, clarity, and dehaze. Now, when we do add contrast, as well as basically increasing the variation between light and dark, the result of doing so also affects the color within the image. Now, if we were in Photoshop and we were adding contrast, so here, for example, I'll add a curves adjustment layer and just add a simple S curve, you can see that when the contrast has increased, the colors have become more saturated. Now, you might want this, but if you don't, then what you could do is change the blend mode of the curves adjustment layer to luminosity. This, to the most part, means that we keep the contrast but the colors aren't affected as that's because the luminosity blend mode allows us to adjust the tonal values of an image without disrupting the integrity of the color. But back in Lightroom with this image, if I increase contrast using the simple contrast slider, you can see that as well as adding more contrast, I'm also increasing saturation of the colors within the image. As you can see in this red area here on the road, and also say in this yellow line. Now, we don't currently have blend modes in Lightroom. So instead, I could, of course, use the saturation slider and desaturate the image to the point where it kind of looks like it originally did. But there's a bit of guesswork involved in doing that. The same goes when I use dehaze, as you can see here, and also clarity, and to a lesser extent, the texture slider. However, for folks who like an extra layer of control, we do, of course, have the tonal curve. On the left, we have the dark tones, the shadow areas of the image. In the middle, we have the mid-tones of the image. And on the right, we have the brighter highlight areas of the image. Now, I'll use a point curve, and I can click down to add a point in the highlights and drag up. And then click to add a point in the shadow areas and drag down to create a traditional S curve, which adds contrast to the image. We can see the before and after when I press down and release on the eye icon. And just like before, when contrast is added, we can see that the colors become more saturated. Here though, we don't need to use the saturation slider to reduce that and try to eyeball it back to how it originally was. Instead, we have this Refine Saturation Slider. By default, this is at 100, meaning the full effect of the increase in saturation is visible. But I can now move this slider over to the left to reduce it. If I go all the way over to the left, then the color is back to its original state, but leaving the increase in contrast. I can, of course, move this slider wherever I want, meaning I could adjust the increase in saturation a lot or a little, depending on the look that I want this to be like. So this is kind of like the luminosity blend mode in Photoshop, but on steroids. Let's try it on this image here, which is a photograph I took of the Cobb at sunset at Lyme Regis with my iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'll add a traditional S curve to add some contrast to this, which I think works really well, but I'm not so keen on how the colors have become saturated to the point of kind of not looking realistic. So I'll dial the saturation down using the refine saturation slider to around about here. Yeah, I think that looks good. I'll just keep some of the increase in saturation rather than reducing it completely. So there you go, just a quick video to maybe remind or even show you for the first time something that's in Lightroom and is also in Camera Raw. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.